will be the most important presentation that I've made in my career. So how's that for uh, raising expectations? Uh, what are we going to learn? You're going to learn why Herbalife is going to collapse. And that's a pretty strong statement, but this is the largest fraud in terms of scale of countries involved, harm to people. And right now we are joined by the CEO of Herbalife, Michael Johnson. He has called in. First of all, guys, this isn't about Herbalife's business model. This is about Bill Ackman's business model. This is blatant market manipulation. We're not a pyramid scheme. That's a bogus accusation. This is a legitimate company. We've been in business 32 years. Millions of customers around the world. Mr. Ackman's proposition that the United States will be better when Herbalife is gone. The United States will be better when Bill Ackman is gone. Good. How are you doing? Yeah, um, clock, countdown clock. Do you want time of day or do you want to count time? What do you mean? We have the speaker timer. I just count going up. Count going up from zero? Yeah. You got it. Thank you, sir. The company is clearly panicking. They know what we have. They say, Bill, that Herbalife continues to face an unprecedented attack to support your billion-dollar bet to manipulate and drive Herbalife stock price to zero. It seems like all of Wall Street is against you. Ackman is a liar. You scare the hell out of people, get the stock down, and tell the world how great he is. You still believe this company's worth zero? Yes. is the goose that laid the golden egg. And trust me, I have never seen a goose put out so many golden eggs in my entire life. For two years, hedge fund CEO Bill Ackman has been managing a massive short position in Herbalife, betting the company would soon fail and that, as the price of Herbalife stock plummeted towards zero, his investors in Pershing Square would make a fortune. I just need to be authentic. Can't you look like a zombie? Exactly. We are Sounds managing good. capital for others, and most of the time we buy stakes in companies we work to make them more valuable. But in a couple times in our history, we come across a company we think is causing harm, operating illegally, uh, and uh, we can make money betting against that company. How much money have you spent betting against Herbalife? Uh, we have a short position of over a billion dollars. So on the makeup, I'm kind of a less is more guy? Yeah. Okay. I've had one other very big public short in my career, which was this uh, short I took in a company called MBIA. You know, we were saying that a AAA-rated company was basically insolvent. People thought this was absurd. The company accused us of spreading false and misleading information about their business. MBIA took seven years for us to be proven right. And ultimately, the company collapsed during the credit crisis because of exposure to subprime mortgages. A reporter named Christine Richard at Bloomberg News got interested in the story and then ended up writing a book about my battle with MBIA called Confidence Game. And then she joined an independent research firm to focus on short ideas, companies to bet against. And she called me one day and said, Bill, I think I've got the next MBIA. Hello, I'm Michael Johnson, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Herbalife. And it's my pleasure to be your guide for our tour of Herbalife. In 1980, our company founder, Mark Hughes, started with a dream. That dream was a mission for nutrition, for people to improve their health and also to improve their financial well-being through our direct sales business opportunity, which we believe is the best in our industry. Herbalife is a multi-level marketing company, which means you can earn on your own sales, and if you are a supervisor or above, on the sales of those you introduce and sponsor directly or indirectly. Our products are available exclusively through you, our independent Herbalife distributor. 
That's why we have a rule about not selling through retail stores, outlets, or on auction sites. If you look at it on the surface, it's a wildly successful company selling high-priced nutritional supplements. But going back to the, the 80s, there were questions about how the products were pitched, um, you know, extreme promises that were made about the products, and of course, always the extreme promises about the income opportunity. <laughs> really committed to making Herbalife work and I was like, I'll do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, I'll do it. <laughs> I've always come out fishing this way below and I always spotted this particular house with the staircase going down. As I grew in Herbalife, I ended up buying it. I step out of the Ferrari, the Bentley, whatever, and people go, you know, what does that guy do for a living? And I go, I'm an Herbalife independent distributor, and people are absolutely amazed that uh, that's what I do. It's an incredible quality of life. So far in the last 90 days, the company's paid us over $15,000 part-time. And I make right now, I can't believe it myself, over $8,000 a day to over three million dollars a year. It's unbelievable. If I can do it, I've made a small fortune, actually a large fortune with the company. Anyone can, it's simple. I think it's a fraudulent pitch, but it persists over decades. So it seems like it should be something that Wall Street investors would want to take a look at. I was appropriately skeptical, which is the approach we try to take with any investment, long or short. And then a Belgian court found Herbalife to be a pyramid scheme in 2011. I thought that was kind of a materially interesting development. And that's what motivated the research. And this is a case where the more layers the onion you, you peeled away, the more interesting uh, it became. If you follow what I say, write this down, you're going to make a minimum of $50,000 this year. That's the, that's the least amount of money that you're going to make. The second year, you'll make $125,000, and that's the least amount of money that you're going to make. In 1986, founder Mark Hughes and Herbalife received a permanent injunction from the state of California, barring them from making false income and health claims. Nevertheless, the company continued to thrive. But 14 years later, Hughes was found dead in his Malibu home of an overdose of antidepressants and alcohol. And a group of private investors soon took control of Herbalife. Before listing the company on the New York Stock Exchange, they sought and found a new leader, Michael O. Johnson. Johnson had risen through the ranks at the Disney Corporation to become president of Disney International. The eyes of the world are on Herbalife. We will be faster, better, stronger than ever before. A competitive triathlete, Johnson's passion for fitness perfectly mirrored his new company's image. At Herbalife, he had a Midas touch. Revenues grew at astonishing rates, from $1.3 to $4.8 billion in his first 10 years. But we're just getting started. We're just scratching the surface of what can be. We haven't penetrated the markets and communities anywhere close to what we're going to see. Johnson did well by Herbalife and himself. In 2011, he was the highest paid CEO in America. His compensation package totaled $89.4 million. Mexican sales up 31%, Asia Pacific up 29%, India 121%, South Central America 44%. This company seems to be unstoppable. You know, my mother and father were incredibly strong influences in my life, and integrity was the name of the game in our house. Um, you know, if you did something wrong, own up to it. Um, just never, never tell that lie, you know, because that's, you're gonna lose the trust. And I think what we've done here is we've built an integrity and a trust in our organization, in our people, in our product, 
Um, and if I'm the one out in front leading that, um, okay, you know, I'll, I'll take that responsibility. John DeSimone is sitting here with me. John, it's good to see you. Thanks, Scott. At this very moment, Bill Ackman and more than 500 people are inside a theater in Midtown Manhattan. Bill is getting ready to give his latest presentation, and they're watching this interview live. In his words, he's going to expose incredible fraud at Herbalife today. What do you expect? Uh, you know, we, we, we know this MO. This is not the first time. Matter of fact, this has been 18 months of, of always the... the, the the gut here, it's always the bark is, is worse than the bite. Uh, he's made some outrageous statements. He has, he has made 435 accusations over the last 18 months. Each one is the latest and greatest until it's proven not to be. Yeah, he's First of all, what are you accusing Herbalife of? Of being a pyramid scheme. We believe Herbalife is a pyramid scheme. Explain, what do you mean by that? Well, Herbalife sells uh, products, weight loss products, nutritional supplements, uh, vitamins, things like that. But what they, what they really sell, and what their distributors make money from, is by selling a business, what they call a business opportunity. And the business opportunity is to sell the business opportunity to your friends, who in turn sell the business opportunity to their friends. You sign up to become an Herbalife distributor. You spend $55 or $100 to get a starter kit. And then eventually you're convinced to spend $3,000 to buy the minimum amount of inventory you need to acquire in order to become a supervisor. And you got a business in a box that can make you a fortune. Yeah! And that's when you're entitled to get royalties from people beneath you in your so-called downline. These are the people you recruit. What generates income are purchases. As products are purchased from Herbalife by those in your downline, they generate a commission upline. So um, as you build your downline and you recruit others, friends, family members, co-workers, it's their purchases that generate your commissions. The secret is to get five other people to do the same thing every month and teach them to get five other people to do the same thing every month. Before you know it, not only will you be a supervisor, but you'll have five supervisors under you. We'll have five supervisors underneath them. We'll have five supervisors under them. That's 155 supervisors. And if they're each doing about 2,000, 2,500 body points a month, you're going to be making somewhere in the neighborhood of $42,000 a month. In fact, building a downline and product purchases are required in order for you to be eligible for income. So. Only about 17% of all distributors are eligible to earn anything from Herbalife. According to Herbalife's earning statements, of those 17%, we know for sure 30% or so will earn zero, and approximately 48% will earn $1,000 or less gross earnings for the year. Once we deduct expenses and consider the fact that they have to maintain a purchase volume the net income is negligible. You're deceived into believing that this is a good business opportunity when in fact you're selling a shake for three or four times the price of SlimFast. People can buy that in their supermarket. And those $3,000, $4,000, $8,000 inventory purchases that are inventory that's sitting in your garage that you can't sell are fueling paychecks for people at the very, very top of the pyramid who have hundreds of thousands of people beneath them. The top 50 Herbalife distributors make three, five, seven, ten plus million dollars a year. Uh, and so it is Robin Hood in reverse. But he claims today he has hundreds of hours of video, audio, documents to support his claims. On some level, you must be worried. I'm not worried about the substance of, of what he has. This is anecdotal. It's very propaganda-based. Um, what he's missing is is that fundamentally, we've got millions of customers that enjoy the product, that use the product, that's indisputable. Um, we actually had a release today from a former FTC economist. What we don't really have good information on is do Herbalife purchases translate into sales to customers who are not also distributors of Herbalife? Or are Herbalife purchases a mechanism for sustaining recruitment and sustaining commissions that have little to do with outside customers? 
What the research shows is that the majority of our distributors come and become distributors because of their affinity with the product and they want to achieve a product discount. So effectively what they want to do is become distributors almost like members, right, of club members, just like in Costco. The lack of evidence in terms of what portion of products ever leave Herbalife's distribution channel um, is part of the criticism and part of the wonder about whether or not this company can be a pyramid scheme. Here's the reality. Our core training is for a new distributor who wants to build a business is they talk to 10 customers today, 10 people a day about the products and the business opportunity. I have never spoken to any distributor who is doing that, who's actively engaged, who is not making money. multi-level marketing, MLMs, just tap into beliefs we have in America that you really can accomplish whatever you want to. The rags to riches story that's there for everybody. Herbalife has done a great job reaching into the Hispanic market. The lower income immigrants have these hopes to find a successful life here, to set up a small business. Herbalife says, yeah, and, and here's how you're going to do it. Okay, so we'll get everybody on one side. The beginning for me was Senor Felipe Colon. Him and his wife called me, talked about Herbalife. You know, I didn't know what it was or understand. When I went to his home, it was completely filled with product. He had it in his living room, his kitchen. He had it in his basement and in his garage. That's how much product he had that he could never move. But he continued to pay into it because he was told that he would make more money. And he's a very ethical man. So he said, I notice after this time, Julia, that this is a scam. And I want my money back, he said. So I just said, you know what? Let's do a press conference and looking to see if there were any more victims out there. And of course, when we made that call out, the victims responded. Where, uh, where did you want to meet in here? They're going to come here. They're all going to come up here. They'll be arriving soon. OK, so this is an estimate, but I'm going to give oh. you, OK, that. This is unbelievable. And they're just regular people. And regular right? people and all the receipts and everything to support it. You've got a real mess here. A majority of the group are undocumented, so they live in that insecurity. They are. People who worked very hard, people who are paying taxes, and people who were violated. And they have a right to seek what they call justicia, justice. Ya tengo un tiempo permaneciendo aquí en los Estados Unidos y siempre he trabajado con entusiasmo de hacer algo. Pero este negocio llegué a perder la cantidad de 22 mil dólares. Cada mes que uno estaba invirtiendo 1,600 dólares o más, Eh, no estaba sacando lo que lo que eh, invertía ni ganancias nada entonces dije yo pues este es el negocio perfecto y, y, y en nueve meses yo perdí 16 mil dólares tenía la ilusión de, de salir adelante eres fuerte ¿eh? She has suffered a lot because her husband continuously reminds her about the $8,000 that she owes to them. Gracias. Me metí ah, por Herbalife en parte de una amiga. Um, me, me decía mucho de la compañía. Yo le decía, no, yo estoy bien porque yo estaba trabajando, estaba ganando mi buen sueldo. Dije, no, está muy bien. Pero en el momento que ella se dio cuenta que a mí me habían descansado y ella llegó a mi casa a tocar, me dijo, Olivia, esta es tu oportunidad. Mira los cheques que a mí me llegan. Si tú inviertes tanto dinero, vas a tú a ganar los 50%. O sea, vas a ser una supervisora. 
Entonces es cuando nosotros lo realizamos que no era tan fácil. El producto se vence. So, si no te decías, tratabas de venderlo por lo que tú lo compraste, es una gran pierda. Ella sabía que yo no tenía ese dinero. Y ella está viendo, y le digo, siendo una amiga mía. Y yo y ya cuando le dije, yo, oye, ¿qué pasó? Le dije, yo no le veo ninguna ganancia. Y dijo, tú tienes que meter a gente abajo de ti para que tú puedas ver una ganancia. Y le dije, ¿sabes qué? Ahí es donde tú te equivocaste. Le dije, porque yo realicé que esto es toda una estafa y yo no voy a estafar a nadie más. Soy yo perdí, pero nadie más va a perder por mí. Nadie más. Yo no voy a ser parte de este juego, le dije. Porque todo es una pirámide y que el que está arriba es el que gana. Pero los que apenas van empezando, cuídate. Y les digo, este, este, Many immigrants migrate here for a better life. And if people want to prey on their lack of knowledge on finances, I find that despicable. And no one is doing anything. The Federal Trade Commission, the Attorney General. I mean, should we start go making police reports? Tal vez hablar sobre las opciones que tenemos, los diferentes caminos que uno puede escoger. Tal vez alguno decide, voy a ir a encontrar el propio abogado mío y luego... Pero la realidad es que en muchas de estas situaciones el que pierde es el que trae la demanda. ¿Qué tal si pierde su caso? Malgastó su dinero, mucho dinero. Otra opción es tratar de certificar un grupo, pero a recuperar nuestros daños. Hay que encontrar un despacho de abogados que se dedica a traer lo que se llama el class action lawsuit. Los gastos los sacamos de lo que ganamos. Si perdemos, tú no pagas nada. Hice algún reviso de los casos en la Corte Federal y me encontré con uno que existe en esa manera en California. Tal vez podemos agregar nuestros nombres al grupo que ya existe. Entonces usted puede investigar y si hay unos abogados que quisieran tomar el caso de class action. Sí, eh, ya lo empecé a, a buscar. Todos de acuerdo suben el mano. El que quiere seguir adelante con una demanda unidos. Confiamos en Dios y después de Dios en ustedes. Amén. Amén. So le pedimos, Padre, Padre nuestro, que nos ayudes a este grupo, Señor, a llegar a la justicia, Señor. Y, y para que no haya más víctimas, Señor. Para que no se caiga gente. Another charge is that we're actually going after the Latino community because in some way this is an impoverished, uneducated group. If a supermarket chain opens up a new store in an area that is economically deprived, they're cheered and applauded because they are bringing good nutrition, they're bringing jobs in that community. And yet when we support the Latino community, in some way this is a company going after people who are, aren't able to make an educated decision regarding good nutrition. I mean, frankly, it's insulting to us, it's insulting to our customers, it's insulting to the entire Latino community. It's been happening community by community. Pyramid schemes are known for the pop and drop phenomenon. They need to find new victims. And there's an initial boom as a lot of people get excited about the opportunity to be an Herbalife distributor. And then as they run out of people to recruit and they find they can't sell the product, uh, it, it busts. 80%, according to their SEC filing in 2005, of the people that had been in the scheme quit and were replaced. If you added all this up in a five-year time, I mean, we're talking about an absurd machine here churning through millions of people, promising them this utopian unlimited income, delivering almost nothing. Since its founding in 1980, Herbalife has extended operations around the globe, expanding across 10 countries in their first decade to a current reach of 93 countries worldwide. We've just opened up Vietnam this week, which is fantastic. Well, why it does that a... matter? The people in Vietnam, do they want supplements? They want to do the... What do they know? I mean, I'm not, I'm not denigrating no, Vietnam, but I'm no. saying, how do you convince them that this is right for them? Well, the company's success recently has been built on daily consumption. And this is a meal, vitamins, new, great nutrition, good minerals, carbohydrates, proteins, all that. Okay. Everybody needs a good meal in their life. Vietnam is 87 million people. 40% of the population is under 25 years old. They're looking for jobs, they're looking for income. And so we have this two-way street, health and wealth. Great meal, great business opportunity. If they can grow globally, go to new markets, China, 1.3 billion people there, Latino immigrants into the US, 
these will keep the thing sustained for a bit longer. How long can they go? Nobody really knows. But is there anything we can do for capacity? I mean, we should be prepared for a million people. I mean, we are prepared for a million people. I'm doing everything I can. We have all three servers blazing right now. Bill Ackman is on a holy war. Now, he may end up, end up being wrong about herbal life. Have you ever tried herbal life spot? A sip. But actually, we heard very negative things about the manufacturing process. But I'm staying far away from it. <laughs> I mean, this is a guy who's one of the more precocious, uh, confident, some people would say arrogant, activist investors on Wall Street. Uh, he has made himself a lot of money. He spends a lot of that money private jets, beautiful apartments, houses in the Hamptons. He's a, a master exploiter of the media. People love to have him on. He always makes good copy, and he turns that copy into to, to riches for himself. And it's, frankly, a brilliant strategy. Uh, look, P&G is one of the great companies of all time. It's been a growth. I remember just sitting at my desk after more than a year of research. Bill Ackman was being interviewed about something completely different. I'm confident they're going to do the right thing. Real quick, you teased uh, in the Value Investing Conference yesterday that you had a short position. Yes. A secret short position. Yes. Would you like to share your secret with us? Not yet. I'm sure he knew once you put this idea out there, oh, everyone would want to know, what is this What is this short? Uh, I can't say. we got to go to a commercial. Can't say. I'm happy to talk about it when we're ready to talk about it. But it's, okay. uh, uh, Bill it's, Ackman. it's actually one, it's a right. good for America short. What I mean by that is as soon as the company goes out of business, the country will be better off. Uh, Short selling. Imagine for a moment that uh, a friend of yours collects uh, rare coins, and you have the view that those coins are going to go down in value. So the way you would short those coins is you call up your friend and say, can I borrow a few of your coins? And he says, sure. Uh, and you borrow the coins. You then sell them for the $1,000 each that they sell for in the market at the time. And then you wait for them to drop in value and you turned out to be right, and the coins dropped in value to $500. You go back into the market, you buy them back for $500. You've sold them for $1,000. You've repurchased them for $500. You've made $500 on each coin, and then you return the coins to your friend. Your, your friend is in the same place he was when he started, and he has the same coins that he started with. You might have to actually pay him something for borrowing the coins, because he loaned them to you. You might pay him an interest rate, so he's happy because he's made an interest rate. He's made interest, lend you the coins. You've made money uh, profiting from the decline in the value of the coins, and that's short selling. That's when it works. But if you sell it at a high price and it goes higher, and it can go infinitely higher because the stock can go infinitely higher, then you're on the hook for that. So this is why it takes big cojones to short stocks, especially something as public uh, and as big as, as Herbalife. At the end of 2012, Ackman took to the stage for the first time to reveal his secret, good for America, short. I just want to point out a few things. We are short the stock of Herbalife. Herbalife stock goes down, we make money. Herbalife stock goes up, we lose money. The December 2012 300-page presentation is incredibly detailed. It's overwhelming. 1% get 88% of the rewards. When he advocates for an idea, he could sell ice to the Eskimos. The recruiting rewards are substantially greater than the retail profit that they generate. If you're a chairman's club, you can lose a lot of money being short. So in order to be short a pyramid scheme like Herbalife and not get killed, you have to be prepared to share your thinking publicly. Well, let's put it this way. This is the best managed pyramid scheme in the history of the world. Mr. Johnson should get a lot of credit for that. Hey, there's Herbalife stock down 14.6%. The news, Bill Ackman. The reaction was stunning. I mean, it felt like... Wow, people are getting out. They've seen something that scares them. These guys are listening to a report that was generated by a research firm in New York, and we've sent her a legal letter. This is a ridiculous assertions by people who are trying to manipulate our stock. What would you say to those who say that you are trying to manipulate the False. success of the company and therefore the stock price. We simply want the truth to come out. The, the moral uh, argument that he's making is uh, uh, closely aligned with his financial interests and that's why he can seem uh, like he's holier than thou. If you succeed, you're going to be donating the money, by the way, to yes. charity. You said you called it blood money. Yes. Because everyone says, well, you can't believe what he says because he's short the stock and he's 
he's going to profit from it, so you can't trust him. So by taking the economic part out of my uh, investment, i.e. giving the money away, I, it's harder for them to make that argument. You know, I am a moral person, uh, but we are, again, managing capital for others, and, and uh, it's actually in the best interests of our investors uh, for us to bet against a company that's causing harm. Because those are the kind of companies that the government and regulators will be more likely to take action against. Now, two years after his first Herbalife presentation, Ackman is set to make more revelations that he believes will deliver a death blow to the company. All poor people are being exploited. The deception knows no bounds. Yeah, it's incredible. Four hours later, we get done with it. Great presentation. And some genius in the audience looks at the stock and it's gone up. What's our response? Thrilled. It's not going up, though. Okay. <laughs> Questions whether it, it opens again. What can we come up with other than irrelevant? Something. It's not stocks not going up. It's a certainty. The stocks are relevant if it's not going up. We are going to expose an incredible fraud in the way they fundamentally operate these so-called nutrition clubs where they talk about places for people to get together and learn about good nutrition and lose weight that's not what's happening at these venues ladies and gentlemen please welcome founder thank you Mr. Nutrition Club's Herbalife has a story. It's very eager to tell that story once Bill Ackman goes after the company. Herbalife Fitness and Nutrition Clubs are at the heart of how Herbalife is helping people change their lives. At a time when so many people in the United States are obese and overweight, and in the Latino community where those percentages are even higher than the national average, it's important. Uh, that there's a company like Herbalife to send the message that we need to change our eating habits, we need to change our lifestyle. Initially, I couldn't understand how it worked. How were lower income people finding the resources to, to run these clubs? And so I, several times, went to go look at some of these nutrition clubs. I noticed in Queens, Herbalife has a lot of them. It's an immigrant population from Mexico and Guatemala and Ecuador. You have to search to find them. If you're standing right in front of it, you can almost miss it. Tiny little stores with a green curtain covering the window. There is no sign saying this is an Herbalife club or hours of operation. Hello. They're supposed to be clubs. They're not supposed to be retail establishments. Cost you five to $6,000, sometimes something greater than that, to open one of these things in terms of the startup costs. The rules are fairly interesting. You're not allowed to display the name of the company, the logo, or the words nutrition club, or shakes, or any implication that it's an Herbalife business outside. You can't advertise, and you can't promote. You're not allowed to attract customers. Can I get a shake? Can I buy a shake? Sure. I'm doing research. Research? Yeah, I'm not a member. Okay, fix it. You go in and pay $5 a day. They would serve you a protein shake, the Formula One. You also drink an aloe water and you drink an herbal tea. So we looked at the economics of 10 nutrition clubs and we had people sit outside traffic trends, people coming in and out, you know, what the rent was, how big they were, how often they were open, estimate the utility costs, the startup costs, inventory costs for serving. When you do the math, you find out your average club, these are the 10 we went to in uh, Queens, loses $12,000 a year. This doesn't seem to be a particularly good business model, and this is before paying for the person who runs the club. How do they make money? Well, Tell them it's not about shakes, it's about something they call duplication. Let's hear it from the horse's mouth. So even right now, because guys, where your money's made is not serving smoothies. 
where your money's made is having hundreds or tens or thousands of distributors around the globe. Here's a uh, presentation on how nutrition clubs work from one of the uh, top distributors. Important to remember, operators need to realize the end goal is not how many $4 services they sell each day, as that is not the way for them to achieve their financial goals. Rather, it's upgrading a consumer to become a customer and eventually a distributor, and ultimately having distributors become operators who will duplicate the nutrition club method. Note the duplicate again and again and again. This is previously a Norbalife Nutrition Club. Yeah, so this is turned over. So the last four clubs that were here a year and a half ago are no longer clubs. There's too many in one neighborhood. And what do you say to your critics who say, yeah, but the majority of your distributors do not make any money. They make less than a thousand bucks in an entire year and no commissions in a year. I'd say a thousand bucks? That's a lot of money to a lot of people. This is what these elitists don't get, that most people come in here for part-time income. They're not coming in here to recruit someone or build an organization. We know all the numbers. Herbalife's lawyers will tell you that everyone gets pointed to the disclosure, but when you look at how it's sold person to person, there was a very clever system that drove a continually renewed group of people to come into the business. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's about a promise that you would make it to the president's team. I promise you, if someone that was homeless, that was lost on the inside, could do it. Every last person breathing with a beating heart that was born And they see these distributors put on stage at these extravaganzas, and they have pins with diamonds on them, and, and that's, that's the American dream. And President's team, that's uh, basically half a million dollars a year for the rest of your life. And those are the top thousand out of about 3.9 million uh, distributors. All right, muchas gracias. So this club that I went into, they said to me, come back in two years, and I'll be on the President's team. You so want the people that you meet in these clubs to succeed, you know, and, and they seem so sincere and hopeful, but, you know, the clubs don't last, and I think they take individuals' life savings with them when they were convinced to believe in this idea and this, this business opportunity. This is a great opportunity for anybody, everybody, and Latinos grabbed it a little stronger. What other CEO gets to walk into the job every day going, I'm improving lives today. I'm making people healthier and better. Their stories are real stories. You know, at Disney, we sold stories and we told stories. We're really good at it. Here we create stories. The way an illegal pyramid scheme works, success is based almost exclusively on the ability to keep recruiting others. A new recruit comes in towards the bottom of that pyramid, and at any time if we stop the recruitment process, we find that those people at those lower levels have no way to earn income. The probability of success declines as the number of people join, and we can prove mathematically that 95% of these people literally have to lose their money. Multi-level marketing presents this as normal business competition. For example, 20 people enter a field, they all gonna sell this product, only one will probably be successful, and the other 19 just didn't have what it took. We all understand that. You go through this in sports, you go through it in school, then you enter the business world. Competition. That's not what this is. This is something entirely different. This is a money transfer scheme in which the one managed to get the 19 to give him or her their money. We are here by the place where my office, my construction office was. 
I was sitting in my office when the Herbalife guy came to knock my door. He started showing me the, the products. He started preparing me things. Uh, teas, uh, shakes. And they are telling me they are making a lot of money. $20,000, $80,000 in a month. So, you know, that was something to, to think a little bit. Help a lot of people do an easy work, not dangerous anymore. So that's why I start switching my construction business to Herbalife. So I opened the club, buying thousands of dollars of products. I was feeling, you know, oh, I found Herbalife, the best company in the world. My upline, Miguel Uruchima, and he helped me to fix the place, anything that I need to open the club. Like anybody can dream, you know. Nice neighborhood here. There is a lot of uh, Hispanic people, they were coming to my club. I was trying to do my best for the people. I was not pushing them to, to take the product. I was just le letting them to, to taste, to, to rest, to talk in my place, to start liking that place. This, this was uh, my, my club, nutritional club here. So um, from here all the way, that was a big front of my business. My upline told me, the more you spend, the more you will make. That was the thing that made me feel so sad because I believed to this person that I thought that he was my, my friend. Our business opportunity comes from the sale of our, of our products. If I sponsor or recruit a thousand people, I receive zero for that. I only start earning money from my downline, as we call it, only based on product sales or consumption. I realized in four months that I was not making any money. He lied to me. He was just uh, interested in making me spend all my money because he was getting commission. That's what I, I realized. So one day, what I did is, Turn off everything, the hot water for the tea, I put the, the blenders in one side, everything, I cover everything, then I lock this door. I lock this door and just got away. I said, no more, no more Herbalife. I lost a lot. I lost my money that I had to keep my construction company running. This is Miguel Uruchima's club. This is the one who told me this is the best business. See, he's there. Yeah, that's him. They took my dreams, my hope to be successful. Just weeks after Bill Ackman announced he was shorting Herbalife stock, another Wall Street heavyweight leapt into the fray, dramatically changing the nature of Ackman's campaign. Herbalife is up much more in pre-market. Why are they up so much? Because Carl Icahn, the famed hedge fund trader, is taking out a big stake in the company. Well, why has he done that? Uh, it kind of seems like he's done it pretty much because he hates Bill Ackman. Most guys on Wall Street I sort of like and I get along with. 
And it's no secret I don't like Ackman. I don't respect them and I don't like them, and that's not a secret. Carl Icahn's one of the world's richest men. He's probably worth like $25 billion. Carl was an activist investor, you know, when Bill was just getting out of diapers. He essentially could buy out this company and, and really just crush Ackman short. As far as I'm concerned, he wanted to have dinner once with me. I had dinner with him, and I got to tell you, I left. I couldn't figure out if he was the most sanctimonious guy I ever met in my life or the most arrogant. Ten years before, they had invested in a deal. Bill Ackman ended up suing Icon for $10 million uh, that he thought that Carl owed him. He was a bully, okay? I was not in a very good place in my business career. And Carl Icahn thought, you know what? This guy's roadkill on the hedge fund highway. I'm never gonna have to worry about this kid again. So I'm just not gonna pay him. They went to court and, and Ackman won. And uh, Icon ended up having to pay him this $10 million, which is kind of like nickel and dimes to these guys. And I'm telling you, he's like the crybaby in the schoolyard. You know, I went to a tough school in Queens and they used to beat up the little Jewish boys. And he was like one of these little Jewish boys crying that the world was taking advantage of him. You know, it's like in the old song, uh, you, you rue the day I ever met the guy. For 10 years, they couldn't stand each other. This sort of expressed itself when Icon saw a technical opportunity to put what's called a short squeeze on to Bill Ackman. Some people have said this is sort of the ultimate short squeeze. We've got a stock now. It's up 20% year to date. Ackman has given us an opportunity to buy a company at a discounted price. And for that, I thank him, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Again, uh, the, the worst thing for a short seller uh, is when the stock goes up because that stock can go to infinity, theoretically. That's gonna just make his losses massive. Why is this stock going up? Simply because Carl Icahn and others have been promoting it. That's why. Ultimately, meaning that the people in investment communities believe in Carl Icahn more than they believe in you. Sure, certainly on this investment, that's, that's the case. I, I bought it because I really do think it's an opportunity for unemployed people in these countries to make money, and I think the product is a, is a good product. He's not there because he believes in Herbalife's products and what Herbalife is doing to lift people out of poverty and into the middle class. He's doing it because he thinks he can make money by squeezing Bill Ackman. Carl can try to orchestrate a short squeeze. He can try to scare my investors from investing with me, which it sounds like he's attempting to do on this call. Ackman takes it one at risk. But what the hell? He's not risking his money. He's risking his investors' money. And I'll tell you, this could be the mother of all short squeezes. Now, how long can Bill Ackman hold out? Now, he's got a billion dollars bet that this company is going to go down. <laughs> how, how big do you think their egos are? <laughs> then he talks about charity. That's complete bullshit. He's not giving it to charity. Now, that's Carl, what say about Ackman, okay? Let me, let me remind you that we are on live television. That kind of defines the, the market for months and months. All the discussion about what Herbalife is really doing gets displaced, and it becomes like a big wall street circus i told carl after the whole thing called me up and he literally said you know bill we can be friends now okay i wish i had a recording of the conversation i simply said to him i said look carl you are no friend of mine and and that was it i i never said that i want to be friends with with you bill i okay. wouldn't be friends okay, with carl. you and okay. i would you okay, said carl. to me you you'd like to be friends so that we could invest together carl i have no interest do you think i want to invest with you okay let's let's I move would on invest with you let's, let's you move on last man on earth let's move on <laughs> I was in my last semester of college, finishing up business school. Didn't really have any job prospects, any idea of what I really wanted to do even at that time. And uh, I had an old high school friend approach me uh, about these nutrition clubs that were popping up everywhere. We're in Oklahoma, and the obesity rate is extremely high. It's 67% among adults over the age of 30. So uh, a weight loss company uh, in a region where it was weight loss is greatly needed, um, I thought it'd be, a, it'd be a good fit. 
the person who signed me up took me down to Oklahoma City to one of their success trading seminars. It's like a big motivational event. Herbalife is a global nutrition company that sells our products exclusively through a network of people just like you. After the presentation, you will have a chance to discuss our products and our business opportunity with the person who invited you here today. And welcome to our Herbalife family and our Herbalife opportunity. These press team guys, they would actually show you their checks, what Herbalife was sending them, and saying how you should get involved right now because these nutrition clubs could easily produce, you know, twenty to thirty thousand dollars in sales a piece each month. So I'm thinking, I, I found a cash cow here. Right as soon as somebody comes into our club, we say, "Welcome to the club," and that's a little something that we welcome into the club and. You know, they feel the high energy that's in there. There's music going. You want to watch out how much you tell them about, you know, the business. Because you'll be like, oh, they're just looking to recruit me or they're just looking for, you know, to get me into their business. So you really want to start building relationships with these people first. On that very first day, it's all part of planting the seeds. You don't need the whole tree yet. <laughs> that will come in time. Trust me. But be patient. Do the deal. The deal is here. What we're doing inside the club, it's about building Herbalife. It's about duplicating. It's about growing our royalty. And if we're just there, just, you know, slinging a bunch of shakes, and yes, having a lot of fun and doing that, but the thing is, is that we're there to duplicate, to grow our check. What kind of sold me on the idea was, I think, 40 nutrition clubs that opened over the course of two years down in the southern part of Oklahoma. So generally when you see an industry that's throwing up brick and mortar storefronts at that rapid of pace, there's some money being made. You know, I, I had student loan debt. Now I didn't, I, I didn't have a savings account for sure. And uh, uh, the only thing I did have was I have a 73 Mach 1 Mustang that I restored all through high school. I actually used it as collateral to get a $15,000 loan to actually open a nutrition club. The way Herbalife is structured, it sets small goals and macro goals for the distributor. Uh, the small goals will be obtainable and it keeps them going, it keeps them in it. And they start them out at a 25% discount, then later bump them up to a 35, and then soon on to a 42, and then a 50% discount. So, I mean, those are little stepping stone incentives to keep people in the company. And that, for the average person, will take six months to a year just to finally achieve that 50% that discount. I bought in and went straight to the 50% marker and opened a nutrition club. At Herbalife, your success is our business. That's why we've developed a training program that can teach you everything you need to know to grow a successful business. And Dan Waldron, he's been with the company almost since the beginning. And I had dinner with Dan and, and that really legitimized it. The fact that I'm meeting this individual who's been in the company for nearly 30 years. Uh, he's got this huge mansion. $80,000 cars in the driveway, you know. And he's sitting there telling me over dinner that you guys have got it so much easier than I had it because you can open a nutrition club and they just come to you. So hook, line, and sinker, the next three months, we were just all about opening nutrition clubs because the dude at the top just told me this is where the money's at. I achieved a level in the company they call the, the GET team. It's Global Expansion Team is what it stands for. You go from supervisor to world team to GET team. You're halfway up the ladder. You're halfway to the top already. And I achieved that in six months. That seemed like a great start. The only thing that separates you from not getting on the president's team is one thing. Write this down. Given up. Herbalife just didn't sit there and say, oh, Bill Ackman's right. We're just going to pull the plug on this operation. You know, they fought back. They built their case in the media and with their investors. This is a war, and for any of us to think otherwise in here would be foolish, because name another company this has ever happened to. This is unique in the American business landscape. Your stock price is taking a hit. What do you say to your shareholders on well, how they should rally to ride out this storm. We're highly profitable. Um, we're going to continue to be highly profitable. 
and mm -hmm. that stock price will reflect the value that's truly in this company. This company has built up such a protective armor. They have the best law firms, they have the best PR firms. They hire all these major sports figures to promote the brand. Now, the best pyramid schemes try to recruit credible people uh, to give them, you know, credibility. We've got Richard Carmona. He was the Surgeon General of the United States. He happens to be Hispanic. This is a person of very high integrity. Uh, he's on the board of Herbalife. And then they have this Nobel laureate to create credibility around the products. I believe Dr. Ignaro is the wealthiest Nobel laureate. Why? Herbalife has paid him $21.2 million for serving as the company's spokesperson. And for money, uh, well, take a look. And I like the idea of an American product being helpful to people in other parts of the world. And so uh, it has every combination of things that I like. I mean, the hardest part, I have to tell you, Michael, is we all diet and other people are starving. Yeah. And you actually have a product that deals with both. <laughs> it's uh, it's kind it of amazing. it is kind of amazing. I do think it's amazing. And no sticking your hands out the window, do you understand me? I was raised to be loud and proud by my parents. I do remember my mom is part Italian and nobody talked about that because there was such a strong Mexican family. Sometimes I could be wrong the mannerism in which I conduct myself, but it's out of passion. Cuando oh. Herbalife has come into our community like a thief in the night, stealing for our people, we say afuera with Herbalife. Afuera. Herbalife. These people are going to their gala and with no shame, knowing that on the other side of the building are people who have received financial harm from them. They were preyed upon. Excuse me, could you guys get on the sidewalk there? What are they saying? They don't like it. Mira los engañadores! Mira, mira! Esta situación de Herbalife merece una investigación. Este grupo de personas se manifestaron frente al estadio All State en Rosemont contra la compañía Herbalife. Tres de ellos son parte de las 21 quejas que actualmente investiga la Procuraduría del Estado de Illinois. Noticias Univision Chicago conversó con la vicepresidenta de Herbalife, quien respondió a los alegatos. En cualquier profesión que uno, que uno decida, puede ser exitosa o no exitosa. En Herbalife, um, simplemente es imposible perder dinero. In 2002, my life changed. There was this young man um, that was shooting people in the neighborhood. You know, um, we understand he was part of an Aryan Nation gang. I was shot in the back of my head. When I was losing consciousness, all I could think about was my son and my daughter. I think that's when I was really born, because before I used to worry about my house, my bank account, that was my priorities. And in an instant, your life can be taken away. And maybe that's why I'm so sensitive to um, victims of whatever, herbal life or whatever. 
we need to be understanding to them. Yep, we're going to do that. Um, yeah, I have returned. Okay. Are you hearing? Are you hearing? Yeah. Okay. I, I can Not the most comfortable the return, chair in the world. the return is behind <laughs> Bill. Whoa. What's new? We saw this idea from you late last December. Since then, we saw the stock double. You need the government to get involved. They haven't. What aren't they listening to? Tell me. The stock is up from where we shorted it. We shorted it in the mid to high 40s, and uh, so we've certainly lost money mark to market. But what we much? focus on, uh, you know, a lot of money, four or five hundred million dollars, something okay. like that. Uh, but what we focus on with Herbalife is telling the story with regulators, making sure that they understand what the issues are, and getting regulators interested in the company. But the fact that you have been so outspoken and we haven't seen anything happen yet, could one make the argument you might be helping the company? Okay. And people can make whatever arguments they want. Uh, I'm quite comfortable the government's going to do its job. With Ackman pressing regulators to investigate, Herbalife executives launched a series of reforms, reducing shipping costs, simplifying product returns, and cracking down on distributors with questionable side operations. They outlawed this deceptive system, which is referred to as lead generation. Distributors would run ads on television, on radio, be your own boss, make unlimited income, and no details. I had about $200 to my name, and so I found an ad that said work from home, and I uh, called on it, and it happened to be uh, Herbalife. But a big part of it was to spam out your message. That was the real income. The big players knew how to send out a million emails. And they were doing that once a month. Somebody would be sitting on their computer, all of a sudden something would pop up. And it would say, lose 30 pounds, 30 days for $30. Put in your credit card number, click here. And the top distributors would sell these names and numbers of people to existing Herbalife distributors for as much as $130 a name. And it would be brand new leads. Someone clicked on this five minutes ago, and here's your information. Call the person. They're ready to go. They pick up the phone. Hi, Mary. This is Aaron. Don't you want to earn an extra $500 a month? distributors were told you got to buy these leads you got to keep buying them and at some point you're gonna start recruiting enough people who will recruit enough people that you will make it to the president's team these lead generation systems were so financially devastating because people would not just have to buy the products but they would buy in some cases thousands of dollars of leads a month so people lost their retirements and they lost their savings following the system. When Herbalife shut this down, Wall Street said, too bad if people lost that money. As long as they clean it up, you know, we're fine with it. Build it better every single day. And building it better means changing a few philosophies in the company. Get rich quick, that's for someone else to do. Get healthy now, that's for us to do. We opened five nutrition clubs kind of spread out around northern Oklahoma. And when I achieved the get team level, then the press team members start telling me how the, the payout system really works. I'll never forget we had a meeting at Tim Files Nutrition Club. He's like the head honcho here in Oklahoma of Herbalife. He was actually my upline. 30K executive president team member, Tim Files. Tim yeah. I'm telling you, every one of you guys have an opportunity to, to live this kind of a life, whatever you want, just dream big. But listen, I mean Tim was saying that we used to just make commission off of our top three, but now we're also going to make it off of our fourth, fifth, and sixth. And once you got past your sixth downline, once you got to your seventh, eighth, and ninth, there was still a payout. It was like half a percent. So, I mean, essentially what he told us was, it never stops. And this was his little hand motion he would do because he says the, it just keeps going down. Because it goes down on every buddy. 
no matter where it goes. I mean, I got a degree in business. So that it's pretty obvious. It, if that's going to keep going down, that's a pyramid. It's not sustainable. The idea here is you're going to build this business only recruiting six people, and each of them recruiting six people. But you're coming in at nearly the bottom of the pyramid. And by the time you get to level 13, your prospects are pretty dim because you have to recruit twice, more than twice the population of the world. That's when I started to learn more about the different ways that they used to recruit people. Right before I got into the company, it was selling leads. I'm like, okay, so I'm basically in a, caught up in a phase right now. I'm in the nutrition club phase. <laughs> and I was like, and I'm on the tail end of it. I'd made a mistake, but I've signed a three-year lease for five clubs. Most people will recruit a new distributor and convince them to actually take over the lease. And then they'll skate off and draw a commission off of of the person they just scammed into taking over their lease. The kind of people that can do that, I mean, they're crooks. When you know, when you're trying to get somebody into a business that you know they're going to fail, that is a crook. But I did have uh, a close friend, uh, you know, roommates through college and, and his nutrition clubs failed. We had a, a pretty much complete falling out over the deal because um, I'm the one that introduced him to Herbalife. It was clearly a pyramid scheme, but when you're that heavily invested, it's kind of hard six months in to say, oops, screwed up. Herbalife is a company with a business model in an industry that has been subject to criticism for years. But even the Federal Trade Commission doesn't know the difference between an illegal pyramid scheme and a legal multi-level marketing company without having a fact-intensive inquiry. They had one court case against Amway that gave multi-level marketing a loophole, but far more important, the government, starting with the Reagan administration, adopted a position of deregulation and the industry started pouring millions into our political system, all with one goal. The same goal the cigarette industry had, because like the cigarette industry, it had an existential need to prevent regulation. It has one advantage, though, that the cigarette industry didn't have. Until now, there has really been no voice of the victim. A lot of times people think the reason they failed is that they didn't try hard enough or that they weren't suited to the uh, recruiting that you have to do. But once they find out that other people are in the same situation, then they realize that it wasn't their fault, that there is a system here that prevented them from having the kind of success that was portrayed to them. In an attempt to recover their losses, the Herbalife distributors from Chicago retained attorney Douglas Brooks to represent them in the class action lawsuit Bostick versus Herbalife. Instead of going to trial, lawyers for Herbalife and Bostick had agreed to a cash settlement of $15 million. On the eve of the federal court's approval, the Chicago group has come to California to object to the settlement. Fairly early on, when I heard about this settlement, I, I realized that this was uh, a very bad deal. How many of you have ever played the lottery? ¿Cuántos de ustedes han jugado el lotería? When you became Herbalife distributors, you were buying a lottery ticket for a lottery that was already over. The class is approximately 1.5 million Herbalife distributors. Herbalife is paying a settlement fund of $15 million. This works out to about $10 a, a person. Tomorrow, Mañana. in court, I'm saying to the judge that at least 280,000 people reached supervisor level. 
and the average losses are uh, around 8,000 or maybe even more. I think the, the aggregate damages for the class are between 700 million and 1.1 billion. I want the judge to see that there are real people who have been really damaged by this company. Pero lo que él the rules are that the judge has to find that the settlement is fair, reasonable, and adequate. I had each of these people sign a declaration about their experiences and their objection to the settlement. They understood that this is a long shot. Vamos a venir alrededor de él y poner las manos en él. If you want to come here in the circle. Vamos a dar, tocarle todas las manos a él y voy a rezar. Father God, I ask you today to call upon our ancestors and I call upon you, Mother Earth, to come into the life of Douglas Brooks. 33 years of practicing law, I've never had clients put me in the middle of a prayer circle. I ask you to hold each one of our victims in Douglas Brooks by their hand, and that inside of Douglas is the energy of the Holy Spirit, Father God. Amen. It brought home to me that um, this is not just a, an abstract legal issue. This is, this is something that affects people's lives. <laughs> if I can do something to help them, that will make me feel like I'm doing something meaningful. Questions? Yes, sir. I, I, I don't understand something. You got this nice presentation, which you spent a lot of money on. Everybody's clueless except for you. I don't understand. Tell me, why is Call Icon making a mistake? Show me, show me exactly the illegality that Herbalife is doing to get this company shut down. I don't see it. And why is everybody else on the other side? OK, well, um, sounds like you're a bull. No, no, I'm not a bull or I'm a bear. Uh, let me, I'm by the way, it's a great question. OK, it's a great question. Let me answer it. Give me a great um, answer. We've had an army working on this project. Hundreds of people, investigators, lawyers. The Carl Icahn didn't do the kind of due diligence we did. Look, the Nutrition Club thing is designed to be secretive. This is an ingenious fraud. You go after people who are the lowest income, most unsophisticated. Many of them un are undocumented. You know, you don't complain when you're an undocumented immigrant because you might get thrown out of the country. Are all of these Latino distributors documented here in the U.S.? So every distributor signs up for us, they provide us with a taxpayer ID number. That is our obligation to ensure that U.S. taxes are being paid by all our distributors. Well, then what is a no-fly distributor? Because that doesn't seem to make sense to me. When you look at the rewards points that you get within Herbalife, you have those eligible to go on cruises and airplanes, but then a separate group that are no-fly. What does that mean? So that's not part of our terminology. You know, our focus is supporting on all the distributors. So you don't know what a no-fly distributor is? Not something that's in our terminology. Late in 2013, Herbalife stock soared towards an all-time high as a series of developments undercut Ackman's short position. Uh, he's went after Belgium when Belgium looked like it was going in his favor. And when Belgium came out in our favor, actually discrediting Ackman's thesis, it was no longer important. Bill Ackman at one point had said he didn't believe the audit would come back clean. It did. That stock right now is up 7%. This is viewed as a very positive move. What does this news mean to you, Carl? You know, sometimes investment is just sort of a no-brainer. I think this one, when I bought it, obviously it was. You've laid out an argument today that seems, frankly, largely circumstantial. And so, I, I mean, maybe you could connect the dots. There's nothing circumstantial about it. We have facts. It seems like all of Wall Street is against you. Analysts, investment bankers. People on Wall Street, it seems, don't really care whether or not the company is a pyramid scheme. All they really care about is the stock price in the short term. Since you haven't looked at the stock price, I'll tell you it's up about 13% bouncing around. Herbalife is going to use the fact that the stock price is up today to say that everyone's ignoring what we have to say. My advice is you probably shouldn't ignore it. Next. It's not a good idea to take moral issues to Wall Street and have them be the judge. But at heart, it is a moral issue.
I think a good model in terms of how to behave is to think about how your actions would be perceived if they were written about on the front page of the New York Times tomorrow. And your friends and your family open up the paper, they read it, it accurately describes your behavior. And is that a story you'd like them to read, uh, to learn more about the wonderful things you're doing, or is it a story that would cause them to think ill of you? If your actions would cause your friends to be concerned if they understood the facts on the front page of the New York Times, uh, then you shouldn't do it. Fifteen months after his opening salvo against Herbalife, Ackman did find himself on the front page of the New York Times, but in a way he neither anticipated nor welcomed. This is a guy who made a bet against a company who is now trying to get regulators to bring down that company. He needs to have victims, these people that have been harmed by the, this company, able to connect with the regulators and, may, and show the regulators how they've been hurt by this. He's been paying nonprofit Hispanic groups for their help in this. Undocumented former distributors are not going to go to the government and give them their name and their information, which people tend not to do when they've been victims of pyramid schemes anyway. They feel ashamed, they feel embarrassed, uh, they feel they've been part of perpetuating the crime. So we reached out to Latino grassroots organizations for a national victim recruiting campaign. I think we committed as much as $130,000 to that effort. Mr. Ackman has made a lot of donations to these nonprofit organizations, stuff like that, that we simply don't know about. We only know a sliver of that. So people question, is he simply bringing the information to regulators, or is he doing things that maybe he shouldn't be doing? The day after this fairly horrible New York Times article, I was having an advisory board meeting, and I said, look, you know, what do we have to do? It just, I can't believe the government hasn't acted. You know, maybe the right thing to do is we cover the position, just decide that we're somehow interfering because the government's afraid to step into a situation with a short seller. We actually had a discussion. And in the middle of that discussion, I got a call from our trader, our head trader, Rami Sai, said, Bill, Herbalife stock's been halted. And uh, I said, perhaps there is a God. <laughs> Less than 19 minutes ago, we learned the controversial maker of health shakes and supplements has been served with notice by the Federal Trade Commission that it will be investigated. The investigation could last six months to a year. Uh, the stock has just taken a pounding and is actually getting Ackman back to somewhat near break even. Herbalife says it welcomes the inquiry and is confident that Herbalife is in compliance with all applicable laws and regulations. This is the one thing that Herbalife wanted to avoid. I can tell you that from day one. You know, now with the FTC in there, I'm just hoping that we just get a clean bill of health because I really do think that this company, yeah, yeah, did some marketing stuff. Was that wrong? Look, do they make promises? Possibly, but there's also a lot of people earning a lot of money. And Acme has, has this mantle, I'm saving the Hispanics. Why does he need go save himself? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> I want to bring you an update on this breaking news story on Herbalife. Herbalife is now being investigated by the FBI, by federal authorities. Again, this looks like an escalation of the probe, but the company themselves are saying they have no knowledge of it whatsoever. You've got multiple government regulators, agencies looking at the company from a civil and criminal point of view. And I think that's where the rubber ultimately meets the road in terms of whether or not Herbalife gets found to be a pyramid scheme. A quick question. Just oh, wait, I'm going to go to... I'm going to go to just... My father's asking a question. This is always risky to call on your father. The definition of a pyramid scheme is what, Bill? And how close are you getting to be able to prove that it is a pyramid scheme? Dad, if you don't know it by now. I've always hated bullies, people that use their force of personality to push other people around. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. When I look at the victims of these things, I, I hope I can do something to fight back against the bullies. We're ready. <laughs> so am I. And we're going to put these away when we get to the courthouse? <laughs> we object to the settlement.
Today's hearing is a final approval hearing. I filed a fairly lengthy objection to the settlement. You know, for Herbalife to get a release from 1.5 million class members in exchange for $15 million is, is getting off very cheap. We're going to follow you in, OK? OK, yes. Vamos a entrar, ya. I hope that the judge comes out and says, I'm really troubled by this settlement. I think Mr. Brooks and his objectors have raised some concerns, and uh, uh, I'm not going to approve this deal. I mean, that's my, uh, that's my dream. Well, every once in a while you get kicked in the head, and I just got kicked in the head. I think it's, there's very little doubt that she is going to approve the settlement. She rejected every argument that I made. I didn't score a single point. Nothing, nothing moved her, not the slightest. Whatever decision she makes, we won today because you brought our message. And for her to say it didn't matter, they do matter. And we're not going to stop this fight. We thank you. I yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for helping us. I'm very afraid that Herbalife are going to say to the FTC, look, a federal district judge has approved a settlement. We've got a release from 1.5 million class members. We paid a bunch of money. And there's going to be at least a faction within the FTC that will say, well, why shouldn't we just sort of go on board? Maybe we'll make them pay a fine. But basically, we're not going to go to the heart of, of why this industry is going to continue to burn people. So how could they have gotten away with this? I mean, what pyramid scheme has $5 billion in revenues, is listed on the New York Stock Exchange, is audited by Price Waterhouse. Now, big lies are used by totalitarian regimes and by the Nazis and by lots of people. And people generally believe big lies because they're so bold that how can it possibly be false? Madoff was managing $50 billion. The notion that a $50 billion money manager was running a pyramid scheme, well, that's why people kept putting money into it because it, it was the biggest lie of all time. Small lies people don't get away with. Big lies people get away with. You open your nutrition club, you realize you've got to recruit people and start making a commission from your downlines. But I couldn't lie to people and tell them you're going to make really good money. When I knew I had five nutrition clubs that had been operating for six months and we had yet to turn a profit. So uh, we tried to make their business model work and stay away from the recruiting and trying to sell the dream. We tried to just sell the products. It didn't work. The products are too expensive. And you know, you're trying to get people to drink a liquid shake over eating a meal. I mean, you're, you're going against human nature here. For the most part, we would eat half of it try to sell the other half. And what happens to the rest? Well, you throw it in the dumpster. We kept it going for a year and a half. For a lot of people in Herbalife, they would just go look for a job and, and feel like a failure and be embarrassed because they'd brought all their friends and family into this, this scam. Let's see if I can handle this without choking myself. But I was one of the fortunate ones that luckily found a, a new and emerging industry to get into that went right along with the storefronts that I'd already built out. We just kind of made a quick switch, turned it into a vapor lounge. We were helping people lose weight, and now we help people stop smoking. <laughs> so it all worked out, but not as a nutrition club. Luckily, I didn't lose my collateral with the bank. I still have the car. 
Trust me, I can tell you with absolute sincerity, the wildest dreams you've ever thought of can come true in Herbalife. I came home today and this was on my door. It's addressed to me. It says, Dear Miss Contreras, on July the 15th, 2014, Univision Chicago aired a piece in which it published the following statement. According to Lulax Julie Contreras, there is fear in the community that Herbalife is spreading the rumor that those who make accusations against the company will be reported to immigration authorities. They say, we suspect that your statement is the product of misinformation disseminated by Pershing Square Capital Management. Who in the hell is Pershing Square Capital Man? I've heard of that in the newspapers. Well, we went on money that we collected from our community, from the victims. No one's paying us. Nonetheless, the statement is illegal and defamatory. Statement is illegal and defamatory. Herbalife, distributors, have intimidated, have threatened our people, threatened them with their legal status, threatened them with physical harm, waiting outside of Walmarts for them or grocery stores that they go to to collect their $1,500 or $500 or $200. It says, we demand that you cease and desist from this conduct and that you submit a written retraction of your statement to Univision immediately. We also request that you meet with us that we might correct your misunderstandings regarding Herbalife's relationship within the Latino community. It's almost the exact tone of people who attack me when I defend the most vulnerable in my community. And this is an intimidation. My dad used to tell me never apologize for being Mexican. And we used to grow up and we used to say we're Mexican American. And my dad died when he was 50 years old. I think I have this tiger inside of me. My dad is inside of me. I'm not going to apologize for who I am and I'm definitely the sure as hell not going to apologize for bringing a truth to the public of what's happening to my community. The truth is not far away. It's the recruiting, meaning bringing new distributors into our company, which is the most vital part of our bloodstream. We bring new distributors in, we grow. It's that simple. It's that simple. And the company has built its whole reputation, its whole life on recruiting. Our top dogs, Greg calls them the hunters out there. Our, our hunters, our top distributors, our chairman's club, our press team, they're professionals at this. Nobody can do it better. You get next to Alan Lorenz and he'll recruit taxi cab drivers and bus boys and waiters and everybody. He doesn't care who it is. Boom, he's got them in this game. So Herbalife, the business opportunity is a scam. This is being orchestrated not just by senior management, by the chairman's club members, by the president's team. They conceived, designed, and executed the strategy to exploit the poor. The recruiting tactics, very positive for the most part. Sometimes led people down a false road. $4,000, jam it into them, buy an instant distributorship, load that product in, see ya. Good luck. Credit card bill comes, spouse says, <clears throat> how are we gonna pay this? You didn't sell the stuff that's in the garage, it's in the pantry, it's out there. This company was a fraud before Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson elevated the fraud, brought modern management techniques. So what happens today? Today, we're recruiting. We're still a recruiting company. We've gotta never not be this. Michael Johnson is a predator. Okay? This is a criminal enterprise. Okay? I hope you're listening, Michael. And it's time to shut the company down. You know, Bill Ackman's got 
a lot of money invested against this. And I think he, the only thing he cares about is being the richest man in the world. And to me, that's a very sad, sad pursuit. All right, you guys have been incredibly patient. Stay tuned. Thank you. Just a short while ago, Pershing Square Capital's Bill Ackman delivering what was promised to be the death blow to Herbalife. Investors just got a three-hour wonky regulatory presentation that was not what they were promised the day before. He's trying to basically make his wish materialize, and they weren't impressed. And in fact, shares rose more than 23%, coming in at six-year highs. Here he comes, guys. Herbalife said in a statement, Bill Ackman further demonstrated today that the facts are on our side. It's highly unusual that you can just charge a company with fraud and then think you can get away with it without the kind of smoking gun evidence that Ackman lacked. Congratulations, sir. Okay. Uh, what a day. What a day. Good. It was a good day. It was a very good day. Life's a huge corporation. And after they sent me the cease and desist letter, I sent them a response. And the response was that I welcome them to come to tell me about their commitment to the Latino community. And we invite them to come to our church. Well, for months on end, they continue to kind of string us along. You know, okay, this date, then canceled. Okay, this date, then canceled. Then they had the nerve to invite us to go to their gala and pay for our airplane tickets and pay for our hotel as if we would take something like that. Just as I sent Herbalife a letter, that's the same thing I sent Bill Ackman. It wasn't getting frustrated that I was hearing about all the things he was doing, but okay, you're doing those things, but they're not really helping my people. And by the way, you know, we're here. Hello. Hey, thanks hey. for having me. I'm glad you're here. Yes. How are you Hello. feeling? I didn't know him. He's from another world, and he came into our world for a little while. <laughs> Regardless of the investment, I will pursue this to the end of the earth All right. until the company shut down, the people who caused the harm are held accountable, and I also commit to give away 100% of any profit I make from this. I think we'll make a uh, hundred plus million dollars. You know, these are big numbers. I really did not know the Latino community before. Uh, you guys are the principal victims, so the money's gonna exactly. focus on the on Latino mm -hmm. community. You can send two or three officers over here to the church because there's three coach buses of Herbalife protesters. Like, there are four Herbalife. <laughs> Herbalife paid them to come. One of them, you know, he told me they gave us $200 to be out there. I said, oh, well, I can't blame you. I can't blame my people. Who doesn't need $200? We got a long road ahead of us, and guess, guess what? what? We're just getting started, right? And this is the name of the game. So the history is I come from an immigrant family, except my family immigrated to this country in the 1890s, 120 years ago. And my great-grandfather was born in the Ukraine, which was part of Russia. And so at 17 years old, he walked 1,400 miles to Austria, and he learned a trade. Someone taught him how to be a, a tailor. 
and then he went from Austria to Hamburg, which was another 600 miles, and he got on the boat, and he came to this country. Then he arrived with no money. And then eventually he, he started making coats, and he had his own factory in Staten Island. And so I'm here. I'm one of the most fortunate people in America. Uh, I think back, imagine if my great-grandfather had gotten to America, and instead of being a tailor, someone sucked him into a pyramid scheme, right? So I, I stand on the shoulders of people who came before me. It is my obligation to protect people who come, who come now. You gotta understand we're gonna protect this company. We're gonna grow this company. And any of these outside sources who wanna portray us, we will seize the narrative from them. Time is on our side. We've spent $50 million, a little more than $50 million in the last, uh, it's now three years in our investigation of the company. I'm, I'm glad that there are a lot of governmental organizations looking into Verbalife, but um, I'm a bit frustrated about the pace the issues are being addressed. And you, with us, together, it's family, and nobody messes with the family, right? Nobody. Nobody. So uh, this was a very lonely battle, uh, our battle against Herbalife. Uh, no more. No more. <laughs> We're taking this fight smart to the street, and we will win, and we got you covered. And this guy is not going to get away with what he thinks he's going to get away with because he isn't fighting me. He thinks he's fighting me. He's fighting an army. And we've got an army of people doing good out there in the world. Life had all of the earmarks of something that probably should not have been shorted. Certainly not to the tune uh, of a billion dollars and in such a public way. They're all victims. This is Olivia Torres. But he's on a crusade, and I don't see him stopping till he gets to the promised land. I paid twenty thousand dollars in, in the business. I had nothing back. When you meet the people who've been harmed and you hear their stories, it's very moving and very troubling. And the fact that the company knows they've been ripping off literally millions of these people over time and they don't they, they don't care. It's incredible. You know, it's incredible. We are very, very confident that as the FTC comes to their investigation finality or they get all the facts on the table, they're gonna go, this is a pretty good company. Your company, in Mark Hughes' word, the future is bright beyond compare. Let's go, Emily! The FTC has charged Herbalife with deceiving hundreds of thousands of hopeful people who saw Herbalife's promotional campaigns in English and in Spanish and signed on for what they thought was a legitimate and lucrative business opportunity. The FTC has charged that this wasn't true, that the dream portrayed by Herbalife was an illusion. The vast majority of Herbalife distributors found they could make little or no money selling Herbalife products. People who leased space to open a nutrition club and worked long hours made no money or lost money. The small minority of Herbalife distributors who did make a lot of money were paid by Herbalife not for selling the company's products, but for buying the products themselves and then successfully recruiting large networks of others to do the same. That's why, in addition to charging deception, the complaint alleges that Herbalife's compensation structure is unfair because it rewards its distributors for recruiting others to join and purchase products to advance in the marketing program 
rather than in response to actual retail demand for the product. Thank you.